Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some romances with the amazing Faded Mate trope. I am a sucker for the Faded Mate trope. This is actually my fourth Faded Mate rec video, I'll link all the other ones down below, but in this video you have like a collection of different romance subgenres. I have alien romance, monster romance, fantasy romance. I even have a few like paranormal like that take place in a contemporary world. Like they're really fun. So let's get into these Faded Mate romances. An underrated one that I really loved is For the Love of the Gods by Rory L. Scott. This is a series about gods and like Greek and Roman gods. So Dominic Pluto and Rose Hades are both kind of like the rulers of the underworld and they have been told by fate to marry each other and unite their people but these two people absolutely hate each other you're trying to figure out throughout the book like kind of what happened as to why they don't like each other but they hate each other so you're trying to figure out how can these two live together in holy matrimony how can they stay married and be this married couple and unite their two peoples if uh they hate each other and everything they stand for this is a really cool book mixed with mythology and i'm pretty sure all the other books in the series also have a faded mate trope i haven't read personally a lot of faded mate romances where they're faded mates but they hate each other <laughs> i haven't read a lot of those and i think Roy l scott does this really well especially for this i think this is her debut book as well so this was a great read so if you're a big fan of greek and roman mythology i really recommend this one and if you love enemies to lovers that are stuck together because they're faded mates. I have two books by Elizabeth Stevens that I would love to mention. I think I've mentioned book one in this series before, but these next two books are amazing as well. So Taken to Nobu was probably my favorite one in this series. Um, it really reminds me of Ice Planet Barbarians with the setting. It takes place on an ice planet called Nobu. I also wanna recommend reading these books in order, by the way, because you meet the heroine from this one, Kiki, in book one, Taken to Varaxia. Um, but like on Mother Reading Police, you do you. Anyway, so Kiki in here has experienced quite a lot of sexual trauma in her life, a lot. She does not want a man to touch her ever again in her life. And it's really strange when she wakes up from cryo sleep after what happened in book one, on a snow planet, it's hard, covered in snow, and she's lived her whole life on a slave moon. And she's like, uh, what is going on? But she's a kick butt woman who's going to brave out into the wilderness by herself because she has heard that there are gonna be these warrior men hunting women. And so she's like, no, no, that's not gonna happen. She ends up running away. But then our hero in here ends up finding her. Varaku is our hero in here. He's an alien. And you got to read about him in book one. And from the moment that he sees Kiki, he knows that she is his fated mate, his queen. I absolutely loved Kiki and her growing in herself and in her confidence and her strength is just beautiful and amazing. And I loved seeing her get to know these alien people and their culture and their ways. It's a beautiful book. And the fated mate aspect in here is very interesting as well because the hero like knows, he's like, you're my fated mate, but I'm also gonna be very patient with you because I know the trauma that you've experienced in your life and he's willing to wait and be patient with her forever, like whenever she's ready. So I, I love them a lot. And I also love the third book in the series, which is Taken to Sessor. This is about Neheu and Mian. These two characters we have not met in a series like at all. So you can definitely read this one as a standalone if you would like to. Neheu is this like snake shifter guy. It's very interesting. This alien character is very interesting. Um, but he ends up meeting Mian when his people end up raiding the um, village that she is, I think, enslaved to. He ends up finding her and bringing her back to his people. Their attraction to each other is very immediate. They know that they're like, there's a connection there, but there's a language barrier. They don't really know what the other person is saying. And so that's like blocking them from like fully being together. And there's another problem is that Neheu was planning on marrying a neighboring tribe's like daughter to strengthen his own people. The heroine's not gonna be some second choice. So this was a very addictive read. I really enjoyed this one, the Fate of Me aspect. Elizabeth Stevens does Fate of Me so incredibly well. And I can't wait to read more in the series. I haven't read any more after this one, but I plan to because she's just so good at crafting like this connection between two people. Next is a more paranormal one. It takes place on our world. This is Yearning for Her by Tiffany Roberts. So our hero in this book, his name's Kian, and he is an incubus. I think that's what it's called, an incubus, where he basically only gets fed. He doesn't really eat like food or get energy that way. He gets energy by 
feeding off of people's passion. <laughs> Willow is the heroine of the story and at the beginning of this book she ends up dumping her boyfriend who is absolute garbage and the night that she dumps him she's like in her feels very upset with the whole situation and she bumps into Kian who tells her like I can get your mind off of what you're worrying about let's go have some fun together so they have fun for the night together and Kian realizes like this woman has fed him like nobody else has like normally when he feeds off of somebody it's like last a few hours maybe until he has to feed again this woman has fed him for a, like a week or more like two weeks but after their night together she basically up and leaves before he wakes up in the morning um because she doesn't want to do like the morning dance you know what i mean um so she leaves and he has no way to contact her after this night he's normally like a one done kind of dude but after that night he cannot feed off of anybody else like his body won't let him feed off of anybody else like he, he can only think about Willow, only wants Willow. His body only wants Willow. So he's like becoming this shell of a husk because he's so hungry, but he can't feed off of anybody else. He's just wandering the streets looking for this woman <laughs> until he finally bumps into her and he's just like full on in ready for her and will do anything possible to make Willow his. He's like, I know nothing about love, but if I want you for the rest of my life, like, like yeah, teach me about love because I want you. So I love Kian so much. He's like one of the golden retriever guys, like his energy is, but he looks like a goth man. Like it's so it's so funny, like a man who's goth. Like I love him. A fantasy romance recommendation is Prize of the Warlord by Rebecca F. Kenny. This is technically the third book in her Dark Ruler series. I've only read this one. I haven't read the other books in the series and I was completely fine. I don't think they really overlap at all, if I'm not mistaken. Ixania is our heroine and she lives in this fantasy world and she gets kidnapped from her home by a rivaling warlord to her family named Cronin. He kidnaps her in the hopes of basically giving her out his ransom, telling her father like, I'll give your daughter back if you give me back the lands that you stole from me and my people. While waiting for negotiations from her father, Exania gets to know the warlord and his people and ends up falling in love with both of them. Before that point though, she is like forced to stay with him. She is not very happy about staying with Cronin. She does not want to be there. She even gets chained to his bed at one point. Like he doesn't force himself on her whatsoever, but like the only thing to chain her to is the bed. <laughs> so she can't leave and then she finally realizes that she doesn't want to leave the man who kidnapped her so there is a fate of May aspect in here that's really cool that i've never really heard about before how like you can read each other's thoughts which is really cool like you know someone's your fate of mate when you can read each other's thoughts and they're figuring out that they can and they're like no like this is not happening <laughs> So it's a fun, shorter fantasy romance read. A paranormal one that I have with Wolf Shifters is Wolf Song by TJ Klune. All the other books could also fall into this category in this series, the Green Creek series. It's about Wolf Shifters falling in love, finding their fated mates. So this is about Joe and Ox. Ox is a human man. At the beginning of this book, he's a boy. He's like 16 and he's walking home from school one day or work, I can't remember. And this little 10 year old boy named Joe comes running up to him and just gabbing away, talking his ear off and bringing him back to his family home to like get to know his family. And there he ends up meeting the Bennett family who Joe is the youngest sibling of. This takes place in like time jumps throughout the years where Ox figures out that Joe and his family are wolf shifters and that faded mates are a thing and that he and Joe may or may not be faded mates. It's a beautiful, beautiful read and definitely one that is deserving of the hype. I love the Faded Mate aspect in here, especially in the other books in the series as well. If you're wanting a funny one, I have That Time I Got Drunk and Yeeted a Love Potion at a Werewolf by Kimberly Lemming. <laughs> this one was really fun. It's another wolf shifter romance. Our heroine in here is at a bar um, and she ends up getting hit on by this guy she's not really interested in and he buys her a drink and it's like, come on, drink your drink. And she's like, no, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want this drink. And he just will not get the message, get the hints, get the blatant like saying no. And so she turns to like throw the drink in his face, but he ends up ducking and she ends up throwing the drink in the face of a werewolf in the bar instead. And this is also a world, like a fantasy world where like humans and monsters like live together. Um, it's not like on our world. Anyway, um, this hero from the moment that he sees the heroine, he knows like that's his fated mate. The heroine though is like, no, it's just the love potion talking because the guy who hit on her put a love potion in the drink. Um, and so she's like, no, it's just a love potion talking. Like, you're not actually my fate of mate. He's like, no, 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 I'm gonna convince you when this love potion wears off, like you're mine. Like, you're my fate of mate, I promise you. So this one is so stinking funny. This whole world is, I love Kimberly Lemming's writing and the fate of mate aspect in here 
was honestly priceless because <laughs> of how like swoony this hero is and how he like worships the ground Brie walks on the heroine. Like he he would do anything for her. And alien romance that I have is Craving His Mate by A.G. Wilde. This is book number two in the um, Faded Mates of the Atari series. I think I talked about book one in a previous one, um, but each book in the series um, is about one of these aliens called the Atari um, finding their fated mate. So the hero in here ends up finding his fated mate, I think in a mining place. Yeah, so Trudy in here is a human woman who was taken by some evil aliens and forced into slavery to like work in mines. She's a wheelchair user and they basically take her wheelchair away from her. She's forced to like drag herself across the ground. Like it's awful. And Queno is our Atari hero who sees Trudy for the first time and knows immediately that it's his fated mate. He's gonna do anything and everything possible to save her from like these horrible people. It's a shorter read. So if you're wanting to read like a whole alien romance series filled with fated mates and great disability rep because every heroine in this series has a disability of some sort, I really recommend this series. Next is a very unique one. This is I've Walked Where You've Been by Marina Vavankos. So this one is basically a contemporary romance novella, but there is this added magical aspect in here. So it's basically our world, but everyone knows that soulmates or fated mates exist. And from the moment that you see your fated mate, like, like a bond forms between you two and um you can't really be away from them for that long so it's very rare also by the way to form this connection this bond at a very young age that's what happens to our two heroes in this book i think they're like eight or nine or something they're crossing the road they lock eyes and this bond forms and it's very painful you cannot be away from your uh soulmate for longer than a few days i want to say without being in like immense pain um, and so these two like very reluctantly have to spend as much time together as possible. They don't really get along and they don't have common interests at all. They don't like the other person. Um, and so this book takes place in like chunks of time of them growing up and them finally when they're older, like finally getting to know the other in like a deep and meaningful way and falling in love. Like it's a beautiful, sweet novella that I really recommend. And the last one that I have to mention is another alien romance. This is The Alien's Ransom by Ella Maven. This is the first book in her Grixonian Warrior series. This is very interesting because it's a series about aliens that are in a motorcycle club. <laughs> Like in their alien world, uh, they drive these motorbikes that are like hover motorcycles. <laughs> So they're in like a motorcycle club, it's really fun. I'll just keep this one simple. So Frankie in here is a human woman who was abducted from Earth with a bunch of other human women. And Daz, who is kind of like the leader of his motorcycle club of alien dudes, um, ends up saving her and her uh, friends who were kidnapped. This is him figuring out that Frankie is his fated mate. It's a short, quick alien romance read. It's really fun, like 3.5 stars. Um, and there are like many books in the series. So um, if you're wanting to read like a lot of alien romances, with Faded Mates in them, here's another series for you. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances with the Faded Mate trope. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me, what are we gonna leave? We're gonna leave the moon emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.